I can assure you the Chinese people who put a great value on culture and heritage and ancestry, they were not amused. Now, shame on them, right? That's the same thing as, uh, well, I don't know if that's as bad. Um, I was going to suggest the Chevy Nova. Chevy Nova. They decided in their infinite wisdom that they were going to sell that vehicle in Mexico. Okay, why not? Think global. Why not try and sell our product in as many markets as possible? Well, the car didn't do too well because Nova, the brand name in Spanish, actually means no-go. You're not going to sell too many cars that are no-go. So we need to understand whether or not our brand and our branding elements are transferable. Whether it means something or translates to something that is a disconnect with the benefits that our product provides or if it means something that's offensive. Another uh, criteria is, let's see, we talked about memorable, we said adaptable, transferable, uh, protectable. What was that? Yeah, that's why I brought them. Yeah, I schlepped that all the way from the junction. <laughs> yeah, have, 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 do you have a couple? <laughs> so another criteria is it's got to be protectable. Can we get trademark protection? And that goes back to what we mentioned a moment ago about is the brand name a name that is something that can be found in the dictionary or is it a, a new word that we created? That's going to have an impact on our ability to trademark the brand name. So words in the dictionary, we can't trademark those. So you can't trademark the word tie. You can't trademark the words Olive Garden. Right? That's, that's crazy. Right? Government's not going to let us say, well, no, only you could use those words. Right, Tanya? That's crazy, right? <laughs> so Circle R is a registered trademark. Now, what they have trademarked, though, is not the brand name, but their logo. What you can protect in that case is the stylized graphic that represents your brand name or the symbol. That's unique. If you file for trademark protection, you could get protection. Now, even if you don't, I can tell you from my business experience that if you can show that you were the first to use that logo design or that, and it's executed on packaging and sales materials and so forth, then you could make a case for yourself in court. Even if you don't have, if you actually didn't even file for the trademark. But it's better to, to file for the trademark and know that you have the protection. Now if you have a registered trademark, a D is suggesting that you have what's called the registration mark, which is the circle R. While you're waiting for your trademark to be approved, you could use TM next to the brand name. Now if you have a word that's unique, then you could get the brand name trademarked as well. Like Lunchables, Oscar Mayer Lunchables. Well, Lunchables is not a word that you could find in the dictionary. It's a word that they made up. Or Kodak, for example. That's also a word that was made up by the company. So 
that's more protectable. Now, of course, there's a lot of brands that use words that are, can be found in the dictionary. Ideally, to get the best protection, you would want to have um, a unique word. Because somebody could definitely use the same brand name. You can't keep people from using the same brand name. The logo, you can... Is stylized, is unique, that you could keep people from using. Go ahead, Eddie. What about like Blackberries? The two, the two words that don't really get it. Like you don't hear Blackberry, they don't get it. Blackberry, two words. Yeah. Uh, I hear what you're saying. Well, how do they actually, what is actually the brand name? Is it Blackberry or is it Blackberry? <laughs> I think it's Blackberry. I think it's together. <clears throat> yeah, if it's together, then that's different from it being two separate words. So if it's two separate words, then it's just black berry, then you can't keep people from using the, the word black and the word berry together. Yes, Dr. Thompson? How does that apply to our international context? And outside the US, let's say, it could be not a business the same way in, um, in England. Now, if you decide to go global, you're going to out market with the right to come, things like that, yours and theirs. How would you go about that? That's the point. There's international <clears throat> copyright protection. The, um, the largest company, the largest countries in the world respect each other's trademarks because they realize that's an intellectual property that has significant value. Coca-Cola, for example, the value of that brand is seventy billion dollars, and that's not taking in. That's not the value of their manufacturing facility. That's not the value of their corporate headquarters in Atlanta. That's just the value of their brand. Mercedes Benz at one time had a brand value of sixty billion dollars. Now that's the thing about them selling cars at thirty thousand dollars. You think well. What does that mean that we're eroding our brand equity? It means that that $60 billion is what we're spending. That's what is, that's the cost that we're incurring over time. Because we spent literally billions and billions of dollars. It's not an exaggeration. Literally over the last, easily over the last 25 years or so, they spent billions of dollars positioning the Mercedes brand as this high-end, luxury, prestige brand. And that's the equity that they have, is in that positioning. Then everywhere you see, now in print ads, for example, the Mercedes symbol and the price 29999 And that's not just now. Look back over the last three to five years, you can see that. Well, that's the most obvious repositioning that I could think of. I mean, it doesn't get any clearer than that. There's the symbol, there's the price. That means that symbol, that brand, is at a $30,000 price point. It used to be a $130,000 price point. So consumers are justified in asking, well, which one is it? Are we a high-end luxury brand? Or are we in the category with Toyota and Honda? <coughs> Go ahead, Troy. Just thinking, um, as the Southern Mercedes Benz went into a cheaper model uh, bracket, it cost a cheaper bracket, did that affect the sales in the High on their high end. Absolutely. Those who were buying the cars at $100,000, at $130,000, a lot of them have stopped buying those cars. I definitely, um, people were buying the, uh, the S550, for example, there's actually been a decline. Because those cars, right, let's not kid ourselves. What, what, what are you buying when you're buying that car, right? A good part of what you're buying, right, forget about don't tell me about horsepower or, or anything like that, right? It's about status. Oh, Absolutely, you're buying.